Code 9. Be my double agent. Suddenly, she wasn't nervous anymore. Even if this husband didn't appear at the wedding, embarrassing her in front of everyone, she didn't have the slightest bit of anger or hatred towards him. She smiled serenely. There is no longer any relationship between me and the Wilson family. So, you're the eligible bachelor from the Dawson family. Now that you know my identity, what are you going to do? A man who refused to attend his wedding must be dissatisfied with her. What would he do now? Let me guess. Ginny's calmness was completely different from her usual personality. Peter raised his eyebrows and felt like the current Ginny was very special. She sat down and said, You are not satisfied with this marriage, and you're rejecting me. Coincidentally, I was also forced into a corner. If you want a divorce, I have no objections. In any case, the wedding wasn't even official. Sure, the priest had performed the ceremony, but they hadn't signed their marriage certificate. Getting a divorce would be pretty straightforward. Peter didn't expect such a drastic reaction when he first uttered a single sentence. Moreover, her words were quite assertive. He replied similarly. Jenny Wilson, from today onwards, you are officially my wife. After work, you will move into the manor. This was his typical attitude, but Ginny was stunned. She didn't expect him to say that. Don't you hate me? She asked. Peter looked at her with a pleased expression. I don't like you. Ginny was speechless. Wasn't that too direct? This guy is not a gentleman. I give up. Peter continued. However... You are useful to me now. Straight to the point. Unconcealed. Ginny rolled her eyes. To put it bluntly, you just want to use me. She didn't intend to cooperate with that. No. Her rejection was also straightforward. I heard that the Wilson family has something that belongs to you. Something you want to get back. That hit the nail on the head. Other than the matter of her being expelled for cheating in university, which was not yet investigated, anything else related to Ginny could easily be known to him, except this. Ginny was stupefied. How did he know about such a secret matter? Since high school, she rented a house and rarely returned to the Wilson family. The only thing she left behind was the pair of silver bracelets she brought with her from the orphanage. What do you mean? Ginny's body tensed up, and she was obviously on guard. I can help you get them back, but you have to behave and cooperate with me. Peter spoke without hiding anything. He was not worried at all about Ginny resisting. Ginny lowered her eyes. She still vividly remembered the night of the party and her sister's words like a knife to her gut. She said she would find a way. But truth be told, this wouldn't be easy if she relied on herself and herself alone. However, as Peter Dawson's wife... Peter looked at her quietly, waiting for her to answer without any urging. Jenny frowned and looked at the man in front of her, questioning his motives. She was wondering what he wanted to do. He was so unfathomable that no one could see through him. She was just an ordinary person, and being entangled with such a character, she didn't think she could escape unscathed after this matter ended. However, those bracelets were her only link to her biological parents. If she wanted them back, she would need what he could provide. What do you want me to do? I'm not going to do anything that's against the law. Ginny gritted her teeth. Under these circumstances, she had to face reality. She couldn't fight back. If Peter wanted to coerce her, she knew he would have lots of ways to go about it. Peter nodded in satisfaction. You know that I'm not disabled. However, everyone must think that I am. Ginny was a little confused by his words. She had seen Peter stand up with her own eyes. But that incident had been too shocking. 
Subconsciously, she chose to forget about it. Looking at Ginny, he patiently explained. The matter with my legs is that Fred Dawson and his father were plotting against me. Today, Fred expressed his goodwill to you because he wants to buy you off to be their agent. I want you to be a double agent and be in my corner instead. Ginny blinked her eyes in disbelief. Are you kidding? Are we shooting a movie? Wait, how did he know Fred was trying to be nice to her? You followed me! Ginny looked at him angrily. Did you put me under surveillance? This is a test. You should be glad that you passed it. If you couldn't confirm that you weren't sent by Fred, you would be dead by now. Peter's tone was flat. It was as if he didn't care about life and death. Ginny clenched her fists. What kind of era was this? There were still people so domineering. People who wanted to solve problems by killing people? I'll give you half a day to think it over. If you agree to it, we'll come up with a good plan. If you don't agree... Peter looked at her with a smile that wasn't a smile. As Peter Dawson's wife, you should be aware. After all, my temper isn't too good. Ginny was frightened by his ice-cold gaze. Damn, how could I forget about that? She was his legal wife, and if he wanted to do something to her, he could find 10,000 reasons to do so. The upper class was frightening. With a family background and a husband supporting you, you can live a long, happy life. However, since Jenny did not have a family background, nor a husband to protect her, her connection to the upper class was a name only. If he dismissed her, anyone in the Dawson family would feel entitled to make her life difficult. Jenny clenched her teeth. Power truly was the source of all evil. What chance did a commoner like her have? Peter saw how she was trying hard to control her anger and raised his eyebrows. It seems that you've figured it all out. Yes, I understand. Since you're so confident you can make me agree, then there's no need to struggle anymore. If you've fallen, just lie down, she thought. What else do you want in exchange? Tell me, I'll fulfill it. Looking at Ginny's innocent face, his heart softened for some reason. He felt that he owed her a little. As long as she could help him with these things, there was no harm in fulfilling some of her wishes. Ginny frowned. She didn't know what to ask for. They had a deal. If he promised, he would fulfill it. Similarly, she would do what she could to keep her promise. I haven't figured it out yet. Can I ask for it later on? This was an extra benefit, in addition to getting the bracelets back from the Wilson family. Peter was surprised by this, but accepted it. All right, I agree. Ginny knew that he was the type to keep his promises. Since he agreed, he wouldn't go back on his word. Okay, then what do you need me to do? Peter couldn't help but laugh. His magnetic voice had a low vibration, leaving behind a strong impression. <laughs> Did you assume your position so fast? He thought that it would take some time to convince her. He didn't think she would be so fickle. Since I've chosen you, I should dedicate myself to it. After she blurted it out, she felt that it didn't sound right, and wanted to explain that she didn't mean it the way it sounded. However, Peter simply nodded and waved her away. I'll tell you the specifics later. Oh. Ginny sighed and walked out of the office. She felt like her life was turning upside down. Just a few days ago, she had been an ordinary office worker, living an ordinary life of persuading people to buy houses and cars. But then, Peter appeared. She had become his wife, his assistant, and now, his chess piece in a sinister game. Her life was about to undergo an extraordinary change. Lewis saw her coming out, nodded with a smile, and walked into the office. Boss, how'd it go? 
He was very curious if Ginny would become their agent. Peter raised his head slightly and looked at him. Go and help her move out. Make it noisy. Lewis was surprised for a moment and then nodded happily. The more he thought about it, the more he felt that this Ginny Wilson was someone who could change Chairman Dawson a lot. All these years, the CEO had suffered too much. It was too difficult for him to face everything alone. If there was someone who could stay by his side, his life would be a lot better. All right, Chairman Dawson, don't worry. I'll solve this properly. Lewis's face was full of excitement, as if he was the one celebrating and not his boss. Peter frowned and scratched his head with some uncertainty. Was his decision too reckless? Lewis grabbed Ginny and left the company at the speed of light. As for Ginny, having a free laborer to help her move out was convenient. Call your friend Rita to come over and help you too. She's on paid leave. Lewis had a smile on his face and was happy to help. After all, she was going to be his boss as a woman from now on. Ginny, you're a rich young woman. Since when did you secretly buy your own house? And you've hidden it so well. Rita looked at Ginny's 60 square meter house and clicked her tongue. And on top of that, there's a handsome guy at your disposal. Tell me, are you some kind of rich young woman wanting to experience the hardship of the common folk? Ginny was amused by this. If I were a rich young woman, would I still need to pay off the mortgage? You must be joking. The two women chatted and laughed as they packed away clothing and other daily necessities. After sorting through them, they packed them into boxes. Lewis was responsible for carrying the boxes downstairs to the trunk. Ginny didn't think she would live in the Dawson family manor for too long, so she didn't take many things with her. She cleaned up the house, covered up the sofa and the bed, and ensured everything was tidied up. When she looked at the time, it was already past five o'clock. Let's go eat first. Ginny rubbed her belly. Since she didn't eat her fill at lunch, she must eat enough tonight. Lewis noticed this and spoke up. Let's go. I'll treat you. Count it as Chairman Dawson's treat. He said as much without batting an eyelid. Ginny already knew what was going on, so his words were meant for Rita. Sure enough, Rita frowned and asked with a puzzled look. You only said you're moving, but you didn't say where. Why do I feel that something is wrong now? I get paid leave from work to help you move, and there's also Assistant Anderson helping you. Chairman Dawson is paying for your meal? Ginny, be honest. What's your relationship with Chairman Dawson? Lewis smiled slightly. This was the real reason for bringing Rita over. In this world, there were no secrets. As long as three people knew about something, there would eventually be a fourth person and a fifth person in the loop. Eventually, Fred would know about this too. What they needed to do was lure Fred step by step and trick him into exposing himself. Ginny glared at Lewis, and Lewis immediately put on a vexed expression. I told you I'm Chairman Dawson's assistant, didn't I? He's gonna be... I, I have to travel with Chairman Dawson, you know, work overtime and etc. So for convenience, um, I'm moving to near the president's house in, in an apartment. Ginny stuttered, but finally came up with a believable story. Lewis saw that she was trying to cover it up, but didn't know if Rita would buy it. However, Rita, who was confused, simply nodded in approval. That's right. Otherwise, if I were to go to the company from here every morning, the route is so long I wouldn't even get to sleep anymore, uttered Ginny. Lewis almost burst out laughing when he heard her. This woman's brain circuits don't follow the normal line of thinking. However, this was enough. Others might not understand, but when Fred Dawson shall hear about this and see Ginny at the manor, he would understand everything. The three of them simply ate some beef noodles at a nearby restaurant and prepared for the drive. Ginny thought about how grand the Dawson family's manor was and politely requested that they drop Rita off at home first. Otherwise, she wouldn't know how to explain the situation to her friend. She didn't want to deceive her friend, but this situation was hard to accept, even for her. 
to avoid more trouble, she could only hide it for now and wait until a suitable opportunity presented itself in the future. What crazy adventures awaited her? Only time could tell. <laughs>